In compliance with continuing education requirements, all presenters must disclose any financial or other associations with the manufacturers of commercial products, suppliers of commercial services, or commercial supporters, as well as any use of unlabeled products or products under investigational use. CDC, our planners, content experts, and their spouses or partners wish to disclose they have no financial interests or other relationships with the manufacturers of commercial products, suppliers of commercial services, or commercial supporters. Planners have reviewed content to ensure there is no bias. Content will not include any discussion of the unlabeled use of a product or a product under investigational use. CDC does not accept commercial support. This program outlines vaccine storage and handling best practices. Participants in the Vaccines for Children or VFC program or those who have any vaccines purchased with public funds should consult their state or local immunization program because some program requirements may differ from the information contained in the storage and handling toolkit. Consider two vials of vaccine. This vial of vaccine got too cold. This vial of vaccine got too hot. There is no difference in how the vaccines look when exposed to temperatures that are too cold or too hot. Unfortunately, they have lost their potency, but look exactly the same as vaccines stored properly. Vaccines are fragile. To protect your patients, you must protect your vaccine supply. Vaccines are among the most important resources we have to protect the public's health. Your storage unit may contain a vaccine inventory worth thousands of dollars. This valuable resource must be properly stored and handled. If you want your patients to be protected by the vaccines you give them and to have trust in the care you provide, then it is your responsibility to store and handle vaccines with care. Maintaining a temperature controlled environment from the time the vaccine leaves the manufacturer to the time it is administered is referred to as the vaccine cold chain. Maintaining the cold chain is a responsibility shared by vaccine manufacturers, distributors, and healthcare providers. In this program, we will focus on the keys to maintaining the vaccine cold chain in your facility. We will describe key elements needed for proper storage and handling of vaccines. We then describe the key best practices for storage and handling, as well as the key components of good inventory management. The information in this program is an overview of CDC's recommendations and is current as of September 2013. For detailed information, refer to CDC's Vaccine Storage and Handling Toolkit. The toolkit is a comprehensive reference available on CDC's webpage. Recommendations may be revised as more data become available. So check CDC's Storage and Handling webpage for the latest updates. If you are a Vaccines for Children or VFC provider, or if you have other vaccines purchased with public funds, you should also consult your state or local health department immunization program for recommendations and requirements specific to your area. Links to these resources are included on the resources webpage for this program. All facilities that give vaccines should have a written routine vaccine storage and handling plan. This plan should include all aspects of routine vaccine management, from ordering vaccines and managing inventory to storing vaccines and monitoring storage conditions. A written plan will help with organization, training, and quality assurance. 
Your facility should also have an emergency vaccine retrieval and storage plan in the event of emergencies that might compromise vaccine storage conditions. Review and update both plans annually. Compare them to the checklist and worksheets for both routine and emergency plans included in CDC's toolkit. Keep these plans easily accessible to staff and near the vaccine storage units and encourage staff to review them periodically. A well-informed staff is key to carrying out your storage and handling plans. Designate primary and alternate or backup vaccine coordinators to oversee storage and handling activities. Both should be trained regarding routine and emergency policies and procedures related to vaccine shipments, storage, handling, and inventory management. A description of coordinator responsibilities is included in CDC's toolkit. A physician partner or member of management should be directly involved with the clinical staff that is responsible for vaccine storage and handling. Management staff should have a clear understanding of the vaccine replacement cost and clinical implications of mismanaged vaccines. Train all staff at your facility who handle or administer vaccines on proper policies and procedures for storing and handling vaccines. This includes anyone who delivers or accepts shipments and anyone who may have access to the units where vaccines are stored. Integrate storage and handling training into new staff orientation. In addition, maintain staff competency by providing training whenever recommendations are updated and when new vaccines are added to your facility's inventory. Put accountability checks in place to ensure policies and procedures are followed. A useful training tool is CDC's You Call the Shots online storage and handling module, which offers continuing education credit for a variety of healthcare personnel. A link to this training module is available on the resources webpage for this program. Many states and professional organizations also offer vaccine storage and handling training programs. In addition to comprehensive plans and well-trained staff, your facility needs proper storage and temperature monitoring equipment to protect your vaccine supply. Reliable, properly maintained equipment is critical. CDC does not recommend specific brands of equipment. Guidance on storage units and temperature monitoring devices is based on testing by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Select vaccine storage units carefully. CDC recommends standalone refrigerators and freezers. These units can vary in size from compact countertop or under the counter style to large pharmaceutical grade units. A 2009 NIST study demonstrated that standalone units maintained required temperatures better than combination units, particularly the freezer section of combination units. Store vaccines that require refrigerator storage temperatures in a standalone refrigerator unit between 35 and 46 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. Use a separate standalone freezer to store frozen vaccines between minus 58 and plus 5 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 50 and minus 15 degrees Celsius. A storage unit that is frost-free or has an automatic defrost cycle is the best choice. If your standalone freezer is manual defrost, you must defrost it regularly. You must have another storage unit that maintains appropriate temperatures for temporary vaccine storage while defrosting. Ensure that refrigerator and freezer units have enough room to store the year's largest inventory without crowding, can maintain the appropriate vaccine storage temperatures year-round and are dedicated to the storage of vaccines. If existing equipment is a combination refrigerator freezer, CDC recommends using only the refrigerator compartment for refrigerated vaccines. Use a separate standalone freezer to store frozen vaccines. Do not store frozen vaccines in the freezer compartment of a combination unit. NIST research found 
that freezers in household combination units cannot hold proper storage temperatures for frozen vaccines. This applies to both temporary and long-term storage. A dormitory style or bar style combined refrigerator and freezer should never be used to store vaccines. A dormitory style refrigerator is defined as a small combination refrigerator and freezer unit with one exterior door and an evaporator plate or cooling coil. This plate or coil is usually located inside an ice maker compartment within the refrigerator. NIST testing found that dormitory style units consistently demonstrated an acceptable performance regardless of where the vaccines were placed inside the unit. Dormitory style or bar style units pose a significant risk of freezing vaccines even when used for temporary storage. They also cannot be used to store VFC vaccines or other vaccines purchased with public funds. However, there are compact refrigerators and freezers suitable for vaccine storage that will fit on or under a counter. Thermometers are also critical equipment for vaccine storage. Investing in reliable thermometers is less expensive than replacing vaccines lost due to inaccurate temperature readings. Put a calibrated thermometer near the vaccines in every storage unit. These thermometers will have a certificate of traceability and calibration testing, also known as a report of calibration, which informs the user of the thermometer's level of accuracy. All thermometers, through normal use, drift over time, which affects their accuracy. Because of this, thermometers must undergo periodic calibration testing. This testing should be performed every one to two years from the last calibration testing date or according to the manufacturer's suggested timeline. Calibration testing should meet standards defined in CDC's toolkit. Several types of calibrated thermometers are available. CDC recommends calibrated thermometers with the following characteristics. A digital display on the outside of the storage unit to allow reading temperatures without opening the unit door. A probe in a bottle filled with a thermal buffer, like glycol, to more closely reflect vaccine temperatures rather than air temperatures in the unit. The thermometer should display the current temperature the thermometer should be accurate within plus or minus one half degree Celsius or plus or minus one degree Fahrenheit. It should also display the minimum and maximum temperatures. Minimum and maximum temperatures on the digital display will indicate the coldest and warmest temperatures recorded since the device was reset. There should be an alarm to alert out of range temperatures and a low battery indicator. And the thermometer should have continuous monitoring capabilities. Digital data loggers are recommended for continuous temperature monitoring. These electronic devices can be programmed to record temperatures at specific intervals. Digital data logger thermometers are capable of recording hundreds or even thousands of individual temperature readings. These devices come in many shapes, sizes, and styles and are typically battery operated. Whatever style you choose for your facility, it is important that you make sure staff understand how to set it up, read, and analyze temperature data provided by the unit. In addition to the thermometer characteristics, CDC recommends digital data loggers with these additional characteristics. Memory for storing at least 4,000 readings, the ability to stop recording when memory is full, a recording frequency that can be set by the user, 
and a detachable probe that can remain in the storage unit while data is downloaded to a computer. Resources for detailed information on calibrated thermometers and calibration testing include CDC's Vaccine Storage and Handling Toolkit and state or local immunization programs. Providers who receive VFC vaccines or other vaccines purchased with public funds should consult their immunization program regarding recommendations or requirements for thermometers. Now let's check what you have learned about key elements necessary for proper storage and handling of vaccines. For this activity, we will show you seven statements. Determine which ones are true and which are false. Every immunization provider should have a routine and an emergency plan in place and should update them at least annually. True by having a routine and an emergency plan in place. Immunization providers know what procedures to follow to ensure their vaccine supply is protected. A dormitory style refrigerator freezer may be used for short term vaccine storage. False, a dormitory style refrigerator freezer cannot be used even for short-term vaccine storage. Temperatures in the unit are unstable and can easily compromise vaccines. Only the designated vaccine storage coordinator should receive training on vaccine storage and handling policies and procedures. False. All staff who handle or administer vaccines should receive training on vaccine storage and handling during orientation, whenever recommendations are updated, and when new vaccines are added. An alarm for out-of-range temperatures is a recommended characteristic of a vaccine storage unit thermometer. True. An alarm will alert staff when a storage unit reaches an out-of-range temperature that may compromise vaccine potency. A thermometer with a digital display on the outside of the storage unit automatically adjusts the temperature on the inside of the unit. False. A thermometer with a digital display on the outside of the storage unit allows staff to read the temperatures inside without opening the storage unit door. A temperature probe in a bottle filled with a thermal buffer, like glycol, most closely reflects the air temperature in the storage unit. False. A temperature probe in a bottle filled with a thermal buffer like glycol more closely reflects vaccine temperature rather than air temperature in the unit. The minimum and maximum temperatures on the digital display will tell you the appropriate temperature range for the vaccines in the storage unit. False. The minimum and maximum temperatures on the digital display will indicate the coldest and warmest temperatures recorded since the device was reset. We hope you were able to tell which of these statements were true or false. If not, you may want to review the first part of this program again. Remember, established plans, well-trained staff, and proper equipment are the key elements necessary to store and handle vaccines properly.
In this segment of the program, we will discuss key best practices for vaccine storage and handling. Let's focus first on the temperatures at which vaccines should be stored. The manufacturer's product information or package insert contains the proper temperature information for each vaccine. Varicella containing vaccines such as varicella and zoster should be stored in a standalone freezer between minus 58 and plus 5 degrees Fahrenheit or between minus 50 and minus 15 degrees Celsius. MMRV also contains varicella vaccine virus and should be stored in a freezer. These vaccines can deteriorate quickly when you remove them from the freezer. MMR does not contain varicella vaccine virus, but it can be stored in either the freezer or the refrigerator. Store other routinely recommended vaccines in a refrigerator between 35 and 46 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 and 8 degrees Celsius with a desired average temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius. Some diluents must be stored in the refrigerator. Others may be stored at room temperature or in the refrigerator. When possible, store diluent and the corresponding vaccine together. Always check expiration dates and follow the manufacturer's guidance in the product information. The diluent for the DTAP-IPV-HIB combination vaccine Penticel and the diluent for meningococcal conjugate vaccine Menvio contain antigen. The diluent comes packaged together with the corresponding vaccine from the manufacturer and they must be stored together. Never store diluent in the freezer. This includes the diluent for varicella containing vaccines and MMR. Exposure to temperatures outside recommended ranges may reduce vaccine potency and increase risk of infection with vaccine preventable diseases. That is why it is very important to monitor storage temperatures closely. Read and document storage unit temperatures twice each workday, at least once in the morning and once before leaving at the end of the day. You should also read and document the minimum and maximum temperatures daily, preferably in the morning. This applies to all vaccine storage units, regardless of whether or not there is a temperature alarm because alarms have been known to fail. Regular monitoring of storage unit temperatures by staff can prevent loss of vaccine and the need for revaccination by identifying out of range temperatures quickly. Post a temperature log or other appropriate recording document on each storage unit door. Document the temperature, the time you read the thermometer, and your initials. If a temperature reading is missed, leave that log entry blank. The vaccine coordinator or alternate should review temperature logs at least weekly. In addition, if using a continuous temperature monitoring device, download the temperature data and review it at least once every week. Keep temperature documentation from logs and data loggers at least three years or according to your state record retention requirements. Now let's review where to place vaccines and diluents in the storage unit. Store vaccines and diluents in the part of the unit best able to maintain the required temperature. This is typically the central area of the storage unit. Do not store refrigerated vaccines on the top shelf of the unit. In a combination unit, cold air from the freezer vent could expose vaccines to freezing temperatures. Also, whether using a standalone or combination unit, the top shelf area will get warm quicker than the central area of the unit during a power outage. In addition to monitoring temperatures, it is important to protect vaccines from light, which may affect vaccine potency. Store vaccines in their original packaging with the lids in place until ready for administration. Keeping vaccines in the original packaging also decreases the risk of administration errors and helps with tracking expiration dates and lot numbers and managing inventory. 
The packaging can also help vaccines remain within the recommended temperature range if there is a power outage. It is also important to arrange vaccines properly. Arrange by type and in rows. Uncovered containers may be used for organization. Label the vaccines. Different colored labels may prevent confusion. To avoid confusion, store look-alike, sound-alike, pediatric, and adult formulations such as DTAP and Tdap on separate shelves. Storing each vaccine in its own labeled section helps prevent administration errors. Position rows of vaccine two to three inches away from the storage unit walls. Allow space between vaccine rows to promote air flow within the unit. Cold air circulation is needed to maintain consistent vaccine temperatures. Tightly packing any vaccine storage unit can negatively affect vaccine temperatures. Remove the deli, fruit, and vegetable drawers. Do not store vaccines in the door or on the floor of the unit. The temperature and airflow in these areas may not be stable and may expose vaccines to inappropriate storage temperatures. Never store food or beverages inside a vaccine refrigerator or freezer. Storing food or beverages in a vaccine refrigerator or freezer increases the likelihood for vaccines to be exposed to temperature fluctuations and light and contamination from spills. Other medications and biologic products, such as blood or urine specimens, should not be stored in vaccine storage units. If there is no other choice, store these items on a different shelf below the vaccines. This prevents potential contamination of the vaccines and may reduce administration errors. There are many things you can do to help stabilize the temperature in your vaccine storage units. One of the simplest and most obvious is to make sure that the door is always closed tightly. A lot of vaccine has been lost because staff failed to close the door of the storage unit. If this has been an issue in your facility, there are storage units which have an alarm to indicate that the door is not closed. Help stabilize the refrigerator temperature by storing water bottles labeled do not drink in the areas of the refrigerator where vaccines are not stored. This would include the top shelf, floor, and door of the unit. Frozen coolant packs help stabilize the temperature of the freezer. Water bottles and frozen coolant packs help maintain appropriate temperatures in the event of a power failure. Power failures can compromise your vaccine supply and be very costly. There are several steps you can take to help protect the power supply to your vaccine storage units. Do not use power outlets with built-in circuit switches or a multiple outlet power strip with an off button. These can be tripped or switched off. Use safety lock plugs or outlet covers to reduce the chance that the units are unplugged. Post do not unplug warning signs at the plugs and on the storage units. Label the fuses and circuit breakers as an alert to not turn off power to the storage units. In the event of an emergency that threatens the power supply, such as a weather event, your facility should activate your emergency vaccine retrieval and storage plan. This may involve moving the vaccine to an alternate site with a backup power supply, such as a generator. Be sure that the generator at the site will maintain the power supply to the vaccine storage units. Any temperature reading outside the recommended range is a temperature excursion. If at any time vaccine storage temperatures are in question, you must take immediate action. Consider installing a temperature alarm to alert staff to after hour out of range temperatures. Notify the primary or alternate vaccine coordinator. If neither is available, notify a supervisor immediately.
store vaccines in question under proper conditions and label them do not use. Document temperatures including room air and the current and minimum and maximum storage unit temperatures. Document how long and to what temperature the vaccines may have been exposed. Conduct an inventory of the vaccines affected by this event. Document actions taken to address the root cause of the problem. Note if water bottles and frozen coolant packs were in the refrigerator and freezer at the time of the event. Contact the vaccine manufacturers or your state or local health department immunization program per your protocols for guidance. Do not discard vaccines unless directed by the vaccine manufacturers or your immunization program. Before we move on to the final segment of this program, let's review what you have learned about key best practices for vaccine storage and handling. For this activity, we will show you pictures of vaccine storage units. You decide if the contents are correctly placed or not. Here's the first picture. Are the contents placed correctly? The placement is not correct. Food and beverages should never be placed in a vaccine storage unit. The vaccine storage unit should be dedicated only to vaccines. Here's the second picture. The placement of specimens is correct. If other medications and biologics must be stored in the same unit, store them below the vaccines. Here is the third picture. The placement of the thermometer is not correct. The thermometer is in the wrong location in the storage unit. Thermometers should be placed near the vaccines, away from the walls, coils, vents, and floor of the unit. Here is the fourth picture. The placement in this picture is correct. Store vaccines in their original packages in rows of open containers labeled and spaced two to three inches apart. Here is the fifth picture. The placement of vaccines in this image is not correct. To reduce the chance of a vaccine administration error, do not place look-alike, sound-alike, pediatric, and adult vaccine formulations on the same shelf. Here's the last picture. The placement in this picture is correct. Water bottles on the bottom shelf help maintain a consistent temperature in the storage unit. In the final segment of the program, we will describe the best ways to manage your vaccine inventory. When ordering vaccines and diluents, there are several issues you need to consider. Determine the amount and type of vaccines needed based on your inventory records and your facility's patient population. Order sensibly. Having too much vaccine leads to waste if vaccines expire before they can be used or there is an unforeseen storage and handling failure. Plan ahead to minimize the risk that you will run out of vaccines and be forced to place last minute or rush orders. Schedule vaccine deliveries when the vaccine coordinator or their alternate is on duty. Avoid having people accept deliveries who may not understand the importance of vaccine storage at appropriate temperatures upon delivery. Have procedures in place for accepting vaccine deliveries. Notify the vaccine coordinator or their alternate as soon as the shipment arrives. 
Examine your vaccine shipment immediately for physical damage or exposure to temperature extremes. Check heat and freeze monitors if either are included in the shipment. Cross-check the contents with the packing slip to be sure they match. Check the expiration dates to ensure that you have not received any vaccines or diluents that have already expired or will expire soon. Freeze-dried vaccines and their diluents are shipped together. MMR and varicella-containing vaccines and the diluent are shipped in separate sections of the same container. Remember that diluent should never be stored in the freezer. Check and promptly store the vaccines and diluents at the recommended temperatures. Record the arrival of each vaccine and diluent in your inventory records. If there are any discrepancies with the packing slip or concerns about the shipment, isolate and label the vaccines do not use and store them under appropriate conditions. You should then contact your immunization program or the vaccine manufacturers for guidance according to your facility's procedures. An important part of inventory management is monitoring expiration dates. These dates vary depending on the type of vaccine or diluent and the lot number. Expired vaccine or diluent should never be used. When the expiration date is printed with the month, day, and year, the vaccine or diluent expires at midnight that day. If only a month and year are indicated, the vaccine or diluent may be used up to and including the last day of that month. These dates apply as long as the vaccine or diluent has been stored and handled properly and is normal in appearance. There are some exceptions to printed expiration dates. Vaccines should generally be drawn up immediately before administration. Pre-drawing large amounts of vaccine may lead to vaccine waste and administration errors. Any vaccine pre-drawn by the provider should be used or discarded at the end of the workday. Instead of pre-drawing vaccine doses, use manufacturer-filled syringes when a large number of doses is needed. However, keep in mind that a manufacturer-filled syringe should be used once it is activated. That is when the sterile seal is broken. If not used by the end of the workday, it should be discarded. Once the cap or dust cover is removed from a single dose vial, it is difficult to tell if the vial has been entered. The vaccine should be used or discarded at the end of the workday because single dose vials do not contain a bacteriostatic agent to prevent bacterial growth once the vial has been entered. A multi-dose vial does contain a bacteriostatic agent. Once opened, it can be used through the expiration date unless contaminated or the product information specifies a different time frame. Write the date it was opened on each multi-dose vial. Some vaccines have a beyond use date that is sometimes referred to as the BUD. This is determined from the date or time the vial is entered and is generally before the expiration date on the vial. Do not use vaccine after the beyond use date. Close monitoring of expiration dates helps prevent inadvertent administration of expired vaccine and waste of valuable vaccine. Rotate stock according to the expiration dates. Store vaccines and diluents with the earliest expiration dates in front and use them first. Check expiration dates at least weekly and remove expired items from stock immediately. One final issue that providers ask us about is transport of vaccines to an off-site facility. Vaccine manufacturers do not generally recommend or provide guidance for transport of vaccines and they do not recommend reuse of shipping containers and packing material for routine transport. Have vaccines delivered directly to the off-site facility. If this is not possible, transport the vaccines with a qualified container and pack-out or portable refrigerator and freezer unit. 
do not use dry ice. If you must transport vaccines, review the information in CDC's Vaccine Storage and Handling Toolkit and consult your immunization program. But most importantly, remember, if you cannot ensure that the vaccine cold chain will be maintained, do not transport vaccines unless it is an emergency. Here is a case study for you to apply what we have discussed in this program. We Care Pediatric Facility has always served children. Now they are adding adolescents to their patient population. In preparation for this, they are in the process of obtaining additional quantities and types of vaccines that adolescents need. Current vaccine stock in the storage unit includes the following vaccines, DTAP, Hib, PCV13, IPV, MMR, varicella, hepatitis A, and hepatitis B. They have placed an order for Tdap, HPV, Menvio brand meningococcal conjugate, hepatitis A, MMR, and varicella vaccines. The vaccine shipment arrived today. The vaccine coordinator immediately logged in the shipment. Are these statements true or false? The hepatitis A vaccine should be stored in the refrigerator according to the expiration dates with the latest expiration dates placed in the front and used first. False. It is true that hepatitis A vaccine should be stored in the refrigerator. However, those with the earliest expiration dates should be in front and used first. Here is the second true or false statement. If a diluent contains vaccine antigen, it should be stored with the corresponding vaccine. True. The diluent for Menvio vaccine contains vaccine antigens and should be stored in the refrigerator with the freeze-dried component. Here is the last statement. Place Tdap next to existing supplies of DTAP vaccines within the storage unit. False. Because Tdap and DTAP have different recommendations, age indications, and schedules, it is not recommended that they be stored next to each other on the same shelf. We hope these activities have been helpful in reviewing the keys to vaccine storage and handling. They can save your practice money, but more importantly, they will ensure your patients are truly protected. Do not take chances with your vaccines. Do not take chances with your patients. Remember, if you want your patients to be protected by the vaccines you give them, it is your responsibility to store and handle them with care. Review your vaccine storage and handling practices. If any of the best practices described in this program are not routine in your facility, please institute them today. For those wishing to obtain continuing education credit, please visit www.2a.cdc.gov slash TCE online. You will be required to provide a verification code to complete the course evaluation and post-test. The verification code for this course is STORAGE13. That's S-T-O-R-A-G-E-1-3. There is no space between the E and the 1. This program outlines vaccine storage and handling best practices. Participants in the Vaccines for Children, or VFC, program, or those who have any vaccines purchased with public funds, should consult their state or local immunization program because some program requirements may differ from the information contained in the Storage and Handling Toolkit. <laughs>